They're both recording. You sure? Nope. <laughs> I'll just make sure. Wait, let me finish doing this, whatever I'm doing. Is there gel in your hair? No! I would never. Hello! Oh, uh, <laughs> how do we start? Um, we should thank some people, because this is incredible. So at this point, we are over 100% backed, and 68 people have contributed so far, which is fantastic. Uh, the pledges keep going up and up every time I look, and it, we're really happy that everyone's excited as we are about the Logger's Lunchbox. A lot of people have been talking about it. It's incredible. Um, everybody who pledged, obviously, that's totally amazing. And, um, and everybody who uh, uh, wrote in and asked questions so far, and it's, uh, we've learned a lot from that, and it's been really incredible and interesting. And we're trying to get back to everybody. Uh, I'm not doing as good a job as Hannah is, but we're working on it. And so I apologize if we haven't gotten back to everybody, but there have been a lot of questions. It's been pretty wild. So one of the biggest things we keep getting questions about is what does the running gun look like on your shoulder? So we're going to toss in a quick demo. Even though we don't have a lot of our hardware ironed out, we're using some temporary fixtures here, but you should get the idea. There have been a lot of questions about using these different modules with different types of cameras. And one of those kind of expectations is, why can't you just throw it on this camera and that camera and everything? I'm gonna to have to explain why it takes us a minute to develop each camera set or each cable set, because the cables are specific to the type of power supply in the camera. And inside the plug is some encoding circuitry that's designed to tell the logger's lunchbox how to set up a perfect power supply. So we have to know a lot about the cameras and be able to test the behavior of the power supplies, you know, how they're handled. And then we develop the encoder in the plug for that battery type. So in other words, if you're using a, a 5D, you would use this type of an adapter, the one that looks like a 5D battery. And that just happens to be attached to the cable with the encoder for the 5D type cameras in it. So whenever this cable set with this is attached, it gives you the proper power supply for the 5D type cameras. Um, we don't have infinite access to every camera in the universe. So as all these wonderful cameras come out, we have to do an extensive testing series to develop the encoder to create the perfect behavior for the cameras. So we can't get to all of them right now. So we have to focus on just the big ones. And uh, we're gonna try to get to them sooner or later. But you know, we can, the power supply is big enough and uh, stable enough that we can accommodate almost everything there's ever been. Mm -hmm. So I've been getting a lot of questions since we're primarily focusing on the Canon DSLRs, is uh, I have a 60, I have this model, I have this model, mm -hmm. is it supported? And um, the cable, as we said, goes by battery type. So the multi-pin cable with the E6 type battery on it will technically power the camera, but we haven't tested it. So the other functionality this cable gives you is the specific audio plugs for that camera type. So every camera is going to be a little bit different in that regard. As far as compatibility, we have heard that the 70D doesn't like using anything other than a Canon battery. So we're, telling, we're looking into that. But remember, we don't have infinite resources. And unless someone sends us a 70D to test this out, it's kind of up in the air. Um, so we'll be working on that. So it's worth mentioning that if you buy a lunchbox and cable system for one particular camera and then you later upgrade or purchase a different type of camera altogether, the only thing you need to replace is the cable system. Let's talk about awesome machine parts. Awesome. Most of the machine parts aren't on here yet. Um, and that's why we have the Kickstarter. Uh, some, <laughs> some people are asking about like, what does the end thing look like? It's gonna have holes all over it. Yes, it is. Is it, uh, is it gonna have places to mount stuff? Quite a few. We should talk about the battery support because there have been some really bizarre questions about that. We need to kind of iron this out right now. The both lunch boxes use a, a U60 type battery. It's a 14, four volt, kind of a eight cell battery. There's one right there. And that's the native battery that goes on it. You don't need to use that, but you have to have a battery and that's the one that locks into the back of them. So like you can see this door here and actually on the new prototype, it's straight, it's not tilted down, but there is an adapter, which is another metal part. So it fits into that group of things that we have to manufacture after the Kickstarter. Mm -hmm. But we do have a mock-up of it that's kind of really oh. wacky. Um, and it, you know, so here's like a gold mount battery and it has this kind of odd metal 
thing. We could actually kind of set it on there. Sure. And it uses the external power in that uses the standard four pin yeah. that everything in the universe uses. See, like, there are a couple bolt like holes here. here, and that's ultimately to represent where something like this might go. That's a way to show this. Yeah. So it would attach, it's gonna go like this. See that from the side. So yeah, it'd be like, it's gonna wind up like this and then plug in. So you'll have this thing and it'll go over and behind your shoulder. There's a weight module you you know for balance and you can use either or. The external power takes priority anytime there's external power. So if you plug this in and you have the U60 battery on there, it'll automatically switch to this and a light will uh, illuminate indicating that you're going to external power. Uh, you can do it right while it's on. You don't have to turn it off. It's got regulators and everything in it. Um, then if you unplug it, it switches back to the U60 battery. So what I'm saying is if you didn't have a U60 battery and you just use this kit, that's perfectly fine. Um, you can use a gold mount. We're also gonna create a V-mount version. All it is is a, you know, a gold mount plate attached to a custom milled out, drilled out, crazy looking piece of aluminum that attaches to the back and looks cool and makes you look mm -hmm. like Voltron. Now this isn't glamorous, but I have to throw in that you can also use a gel cell lead battery, the kind you see in the fire escapes. These are showing up a lot on dollies, um, all kinds of camera equipment. They're dirt cheap, they're like 20 bucks. The capacity isn't super high, um, but it's an option. And the battery indicator in the lunchbox is double calibrated, so it can automatically detect that you're using a lead gel cell and it will show a dead battery at the right time regardless of which battery you're using. So you can totally use those. You can also use short power. Here's a V-mount charger. You can see that it's got a standard four pin plug. I don't know if you can see that. So basically what I'm saying is that anything that uses a standard four pin connector, that's basically what you would call vaguely the 12 volt standard broadcast TV cameras, all those power supplies, all those batteries, the battery belts, all that stuff is good with a lunchbox and it will know how to indicate if your battery is dead. Mm -hmm. So there's a couple other reasons we picked this particular battery and the biggest reason is cost. You know, cost to size ratio. If you want to get a battery like this, you're going to spend a lot more money. And if you happen to have some laying around and you want to adapt it with the system, that's great. But the system's not going to require you to go out and buy a battery that costs hundreds of dollars with a charger that costs also hundreds of dollars. So this keeps it economical and the battery is very small and lightweight as well. A lot of people have the older NPF 950, 750 batteries are meant for one laying around here and they do look like this. The problem with the old one is they're seven volts and um, this is a 14.4 volt battery, so it's a lot easier for us. We have a lot more freedom with electronics. The central theme around the lunchbox and a lot of this equipment is to get rid of batteries. We didn't want to have multiple batteries for you to deal with in the field because nobody wants to juggle two battery systems at the same time, three, four. It's just, it's, that's the main irritant uh, when you're working quickly in the field. I'm gonna talk about the power ports because there have been some questions about them. Each box, has four ports for accessory electricity um, and so the barrel connectors are two standards the center part is uh, either 2.5 millimeter or 2.1 I'm sure some of you are totally familiar with this problem nobody seems to come to an agreement on which one is the standard and that's fine so we decided to have uh, have both so there are two pairs of connectors on each box and one is 2.5 one is 2.1. As far as the voltage, it's technically passed through. So whatever comes out of the battery is what goes into there. So if you have a 12 volt battery, 12 volts goes through. If you have a 14.4, it's 14.4. So I guess you would call that a vague 12 volt standard. And that's usually what the accessories are supposed to have for voltage for this size connector. Here's a J plug. Shows you how many standards there are. Totally crazy. Um, that's yet another one. These yellow fronts are J plugs. Each one of these is hooked to or is supposed to go with a certain voltage. This size is supposed to go with 12 volts. If you have a weird accessory that uses 5 volts, um, that's pretty dangerous. And so you might want to check and make sure it's sort of a 12 volt type of a thing. Remember that 12 volt electronics usually are okay with 14.4 volt batteries because they're kind of in the same range. And as batteries wear out, their voltage goes down. So they're engineered to accommodate that. We've reached our goal, which is about $11,000, just enough to get started, get our metal stuff going so we can start cooking. I think we have $12,009 now. So we're, so we're really cooking. That's hard. magnificent, and we're incredibly appreciative. Um, we're not done with the Kickstarter yet, so there's still time um, to get people in. Uh, one of the exciting things we're thinking about that we cannot afford at eleven dollars or $12,000 
is to integrate some control interface stuff where you can uh, plug your phone in, you can get audio metering and audio time record metering. So if 15 seconds ago, the audio might have clipped, you can just watch a time spectrogram and you can see it go by. Uh, we actually have most of that done, um, but we can't integrate it because we need to have bulletproof hardware. Anyway, in a dream world, which might happen if we get up to twenty or thirty thousand dollars, we can totally execute this. Library's lunchbox app. Yeah, it, it's it's pretty Halfway cool there. already. <laughs> um, so what we're saying is there is a stretch goal. So with the Kickstarter currently being around twelve thousand dollars, and with two days left in the campaign, it might seem a little ambitious, but we have total faith in the Kickstarter community and so many people have expressed such great excitement about this idea. I think we can do it. Do what? Get to $20,000. Oh, sorry. So thanks again to everyone who's contributed and thanks in advance for any future contributors. We really hope that we can make this a great success. Um, there's a couple more days left in the campaign to take advantage of our Kickstarter exclusive pricing, which is another great reason you should be pledging. Because after that Kickstarter, the price is going to go up, so... Yeah, it will. Yeah, so you might want to get in there. <laughs> Make sure to keep telling people about us. It's been really helpful. It's been incredible. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it.